I'm Hank Stoltz, and this is Perspectives with Asima Silva. And Asima, today your guest is from an organization called Helping Hand. Yes, HHRD. So we have Humayun Kabir here, who's the regional coordinator um, of, of HHRD. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about what this organization does and how it helps with a lot of different countries, um, uh, children, women, people who really are in need. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you for inviting me, giving me the opportunity to talk to your community about our organization. Helping Hand for Relief and Development, it's an um, uh, international relief organization which was established in 2005 by a parent organization, Islamic Circle of North America. It's an Islamic-based organization, but still our mission and our vision is that we help and treat anybody who's faced with uh, man-made disaster or natural disaster throughout the world. And we do not uh, distinguish between race, color, creed, or where you are from. Uh, we are usually the second or third responders to any situations. Uh, we have 13 local offices where we do outreach and networking and fundraising. It's a US-based NGO, 501C. Um, and then we have uh, eight international offices which do the work in the field. We have office in Pakistan, uh, Jordan, Amman, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Zanzibar, um, Nepal, Philippines. Uh, we are working in Haiti. We are working in uh, Mexico. We are working in Caribbean. Um, so we are kind of all, all over the world uh, helping. Now, uh, even though uh, you, you help everyone, obviously, right. when you go to these disasters, was part of starting the organization uh, based on faith? I mean, is the, is, is the faith a part of, of what you do when you respond? It is. It's a faith-based organization, mm -hmm. but we don't, uh, like I said, we don't. Uh, You're not asking anybody in the middle of a disaster. In the middle of the disaster <laughs> to, okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to religion, you. Are you? Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we go and help, but our work is because our religion teaches us uh, helping humanity is part of our religion. It's, it's taught in us, it's told in our Quran uh, by our prophet's life that uh, if we don't help each other, you're not a good mo person, let alone being a Muslim. Um, so, and it also says in our Quran that it's, we need to worry about our next door neighbor. If your neighbor is sleeping hungry, it's your duty to make sure they get fed. Uh, but we don't, unfortunately, don't go that far, but that's the principle of, uh, based in it. Uh, it says in Quran that, oh, Muhammad, you weren't not just sent on earth to preach, but to help. And yeah. what, what are you so, doing to help? What is the, what is the kind of services um, that are provided? We have um, about 19 different projects. Sometimes I run. Um, we do orphan support program. We do skill development where we are teaching the community, primary sisters and ladies, how to live by themselves. Because they're, um, in these situations, um, most of the men get killed or lost their lives. So the families are left alone by s ladies to do it. So instead of relying on that, we provide skill development program where they are taught how to sew, knit, arts and craft, uh, computer skills. And in some areas, we are even teaching them how to farm, how to drive uh, the cars and trucks uh, to the brothers. For example, in Africa, I was in need of it. So we are doing that. Uh, we have Water for Life project where we put water wells um, in most of our third world countries, uh, and even a, actually in uh, Burma, we have started it uh, in Myanmar to provide uh, water wells because the water condition is very poor. And uh, most of our illnesses and uh, child uh, diseases are due to lack of uh, clean water. You know, boy, fascinating that you're in so many countries. So really, some of what you do in your responses would be different. Uh, you're responding, and sadly, boy, we here in America, we've had so many uh, right. disasters recently. And I want to hear a little bit about your response to some of those. But in, in some uh, of the third world countries, as you described, I'm guessing that your response or what you would do after the disaster different right. than what you would do here in America, for example. Right, because we are not a first aid. We are not a medical mm. um, in the medical field. But yet we do have our medical programs uh, where we do. We have mobile clinics. We uh, take it to various locations uh, if needed. So we basically go in after the um, situation has been safe and it's been cleared by the local agencies that we can go in and provide the relief work, providing them housing, 
providing them food, providing them water, making them comfortable, uh, providing them shelters, uh, and to kind of get them back on their feet. Uh, Mexico's uh, Haiti's earthquakes uh, happen, so we are there on a regular basis to provide them, repair their houses, uh, to provide them equipment, um, stuff uh, which is... Can I just ask, because Haiti just reminds me of this, so much money gets put towards that. So much work. I mean, people see this disaster. We see it on our TV screens. We give to all of these different organizations. Uh, people go there, the Be Like Brit uh, Orphanage from right here in, right. in Worcester. What a great organization that has gone over there. And yet it takes so many years to rebuild. I mean, you know, even Puerto Rico, they're talking about that this is going to be decades to get them back on the feet. What what is it after these disasters that takes so long for the aid to get to the people that it needs to, that takes years sometimes for us to be able to help the people that we want to help immediately? Right. Uh, logistic is the number one. Um, in Haiti, we have faced issues that when the earthquake comes or storms comes or hurricane comes, uh, because the roads are not that strong or to hold on to those things. So they are washed away. So there are communities which are sometimes only reachable by aircrafts, helicopters, and things like that. So at times, getting the aid is the huge challenge uh, because there are no roads. So are there any policies or countries that have like policies in place that kind of make roadblocks to get this aid there? Um, yeah, there are. We have to go through politics, like, uh, for example, going back to Myanmar, Burma. Uh, we have huge struggle there. Uh, we are ready to provide the aid. We are ready to provide it. but there are hurdles in it that we can't do freely. Uh, we have to go through the government. We have to abide by their policies, give it a plan. And the plan or the program takes sometimes months to get approved. Uh, so once it's approved, then we go in and do it. Uh, right now, we are doing food. We are doing uh, started the medical uh, camps clinics uh, recently, which took us about four to five months to get it approved. Um, so there are challenges um, which we have to avoid. Like in U.S., there are policies, there are procedures you have to follow to do the it. The wheels so. turn slowly. It, I have to right. say because, of course, you know, the last program that you had, Asma, was about what is going on in Myanmar, Burma, right. and uh, just the horror that is happening there. Right. When you're going as Helping Hand, even though it is this relief organization, even though you're there for humanitarian aid, are your workers sometimes in danger? They are definitely, and that's why there are certain regions, uh, certain areas where we do not go. Um, for example, into Syria, we still do not go into Syria to help the Syrian refugees. We are all around the border. Uh, we are in Jordan. We established our office in Jordan after the crisis started. Uh, we are Lebanon, which is the largest uh, refugee camp in the world, so we are helping them. Uh, we are helping around it because Syria is still a very vital, very dangerous that we do not let our, we do not want our workers, whoever works for us, either it's another NGO or our own staff, don't put people in harm's way. And I'm assuming this organization runs by a lot of volunteers. Yes. Um, any estimate of how many? Um, actually, we haven't count. Like, for example, in US, we have about 100 staff members, but what we do, um, the work we do, and what not, um, every event we do, it takes a dozen or two people to do it, and 90% of those help comes uh, through volunteers to community members and uh, through our partners' uh, organizations. So I would say at least a couple of hundreds, if not thousand, uh, people working in volunteers. And yeah. same internationally also, uh, mostly we are relying on uh, volunteers. We do have our staff to monitor, to record keep, to book keep, and things like that. Uh, but mostly it's all like anybody else, any other organization. Sure. So here in the United States, I mean, so would you have responded to, to Houston down in the Florida Keys? Are those the kinds of things that, that you're responding to? It's strange uh, because we are set up as an INGO, mm -hmm. international NGO. Uh, so we are only restricted to, by the local laws, we can only work internationally. I see. Okay. We can't do local work. But our parent organization, Islamic Circle of North America, thinks because they are umbrella organization, they are more seniors. So they have started, actually, this was uh, Islamic Relief is an organization who works in U.S. Uh, before 2005, our work was still there in international, but Islamic Relief did it. In 2005, our umbrella organization made 
helping hand for relief and development to do international work and Islamic relief does local work so they yeah. respond to any uh, disasters within the country and currently are they doing anything with Florida Houston and Puerto Rico yes they are all there um, Puerto Rico we go in uh, because it still becomes a kind of an international territory we are there uh, there too Isla and Islamic relief get to and uh, <clears throat> Ikna, um, ICNA Relief has uh, camps in Houston. They are there. There is office there in Houston, and they are constantly working to provide aid and uh, support to the people there. And in yeah. Florida also, they were there. Um, yeah. And it seems, I mean, you, you have some a very specific mission, it seems, uh, clearly the way in which you help. When you're there with the other relief organizations, uh, is there like a lot of behind the scenes about, okay, we'll handle this, you handle that, this is what, you know, this is what you're good at. I'm, uh, uh, Red Cross, for, for example, I know is, is very good at getting the canteen trucks there and some of that immediate type of, of relief that you seem to, you know, that's not your, your niche. I mean, you, you're doing some different things to help. Right. Um, and we all work uh, together and then go, uh, we make partners with you and various UN organizations because there are some things, some places where we can't reach. Um, or any organization, I believe, can't do it alone. Um, it has to be partnership, it has to coexist. So we have a lot of international partners who we work with constantly. Um, some of them, um, they apply for grants, we give them the funds, they work uh, on our banner and doing the projects because they are experts doing it. For example, in Pakistan, there's a local NGO we work with for our water for wells. We were working on it, but re retentions or sustaining the water wells was becoming challenging for us because we don't have the expertise to do it. Yeah. So that organization is the experts. They have the engineers, uh, technicians who build the water wells and they maintain the water wells. So now we give all our water wells to them and they work as a partner organization and build water wells and maintain it. So it goes a long way that way. And locally, if people want to help, what can they do and where, they, where, can, um, they, where can they also do it? Uh, we have a local office in Westboro um, at 80 Turnpike Road in Westboro. Um, you can always visit there. Um, you can always visit uh, our website, which is www.hhrd.org. Uh, we are on Facebook. We are on social media. We are on tweets. So everywhere you can look it up as hhrd.org and help us and... Yeah, boy, I'm interested. How did you get involved? Find out about this organization. <laughs> were, were you there right at the beginning? Um, I wasn't there. This is my sixth year with them. Sixth year, yeah. And um, we believe that whatever happens, uh, happens for a reason. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our God, has a bigger plan than what we have. We make our plans, but not necessarily do, but he has a bigger plan. Um, I had lost my job, and I was looking for a job. Uh, one of my friends introduced me to the organization that they have been looking for somebody in this area you might be a good fit. So I worked in the corporate world. Um, so I started this, yeah, right. I look for a job and I'll help you guys. Uh, that's no yeah. problem, it's, it's good work. So five years later, I'm still working. I haven't found anything <laughs> else yet. <laughs> Moving from the corporate world to, to this, what do you find the most satisfying about Helping Hand? Um, the most satisfying is that I'm, I'm being able to help. I'm a middle, I, I consider, myself and our organization as a, in the middle between the communities um, and the needy people. Uh, at times we get involved in our lives. We have a comfortable house, comfortable car, comfortable job. We get up in the morning, go to work, come home, have fun, go to sleep. We forget there are people who are not even having that one meal um, a day. Um, so it gives me satisfaction that my work is helping somebody, indirectly or directly. Yeah. Right. I do have to say, Asma, I mean, after last week's show in which we were hearing about uh, the horror that is happening in, in Myanmar, the good work that you are doing around the world in the international community, yeah, uh, the next time that I want to complain because my cable's out for a half <laughs> yeah. hour or I lost power for, you know, heaven help me, a day or something, yes, yeah. yes let's remember what's going on well, in some other places. It definitely puts things into perspective. Yeah. I, uh, what local communities and organizations are you're working locally in this region um, that is helping out HHRD? Um, I cover the whole New England, so that gives me six states. Um, pretty much I've visited every state. Um, other than Vermont, I haven't been there yet. Um, and inshallah, God willing, I will be there soon. Uh, Worcester Islamic Center, 
uh, which is right in Worcester, uh, Islamic Center of Greater Worcester. Um, then we have a church in uh, Grafton. Um, all our Islamic centers in Massachusetts and Connecticut are pretty open, pretty helpful, uh, stepping forward uh, to help us. We have Islamic centers in Hopkinton. We have Islamic centers in Wayland, Framingham, uh, Acton, Chelmsford, Mass, Lowell, uh, Lowell Burlington, um, all over, you name it, and everywhere. And I have managed in these five years to uh, visit a lot of them. Uh, there are still so many Islamic centers I am not able to reach. Um, they are there, um, which we need to go. So mostly primary, it's Islamic communities. And slowly, this year or last year, as of last year, I would say we have started to work a little bit with non-Islamic organizations, with non-Islamic centers like churches, synagogues, and uh, things like that through our Islamic centers where they help us and do it. The other, uh, another project is our in-kind center. Uh, in-kind campaigns where we collect don uh, donations from the community, be it food, be it clothing, be it toys. Um, and if it's usable, we pack it in boxes, fill up 40 feet containers, and ship it uh, to countries. So if um, someone comes to your, your um, location in Westboro, right. what would they expect? Uh, basically, it's an office come a warehouse. Uh, primarily, it's set up as a collection center for donations and processing. That's where we process. Uh, collect donations from throughout New England, transport it to one location, process them, pack it, ship it, and once we have enough to fill up a container, we fill the containers from there and do it. And all our 13 offices do the same thing. We sell, we send about 80 to 90 containers a year through various countries. Well, I'm interested in this, uh, finding out a little bit more about the way that you're working in the interfaith community. Right. So throughout uh, New England, and I'm really, I'm sure throughout the, the world, you have the Islamic centers, gives you a good sort of backbone for the work that you are doing. But now to begin to reach out to some of these other organizations, any resistance as you're, as you're reaching out? Um, no resistance at all. I hear so much negatives about it that it is, but I haven't seen it. I haven't come across anything. Uh, it's all positive uh, because this work is that way. Do it will touch anybody's heart. Um, if you are but a who human, who could say no to helping someone? It. Exactly. So no matter where you live, which religion you follow, or nothing, it it does it. A um, couple of weeks ago, I reached out to about 30 different churches and whatnot. Most of them responded. They couldn't attend to that event, but they all said, "How can we help? Let's talk. Let's connect again, and we would love to work together." So that's always a positive thing. Um, to reaching out and building those bridges. Yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, and, and it's sort of the answer that I expected. I mean, people are people, and you're absolutely right. I think sometimes, yeah. because we are inundated 24 hours a day with this nonstop news and the things that we read, uh, people are sometimes hesitant or think that they're going to get a different reception than they, than they are going to get or that right. they, they do, and sometimes they're hesitant to reach out. Right, exactly. which is a great positive message that you just said is we still have our humanity. Mm. Um, what I was wondering, if someone wants to not only just help locally, internationally, do you have programs if they can like um, go internationally and volunteer? Uh, we had um, for adults, unfortunately not, uh, but we do have um, a program, a campaign, which we call Youth Engagement, where we try to encourage the youth to come to this work style or to get education, what's happening around the world, and things like that. In Youth Engagement, we had uh, um, Youth for Haiti trip, Youth for Jordan, and we are starting Youth for Africa, uh, where we take youth from 18 years to 25 years of age, um, subsidized a little bit for them, uh, but they still have to pay for it. Um, they go to our camps, uh, to our offices in these countries. They spend a week to uh, seven days there. Uh, some of the excursion is there, yeah, because they had, it has to be fun. All work goes to waste. Uh, <laughs> so All work and no has play. To be fun. <laughs> exactly. So there's fun and there's play. So they go in and they see for themselves. They visit at the orphans, uh, how the orphans are living. They help us distribute uh, food packages. Uh, they go play with the orphans. They go see how our water, bills, uh, water wells are built and uh, how our various other um, training programs are going. Uh, they have even helped us in some of them in the, sometimes in the medical camp as assistants and things like that. So they see it by themselves. We can see the videos. Uh, we can see it on Facebook and say sorry, make prayer for them and whatnot. But once you see it, it's a totally different. Oh, yeah, market. no, exactly. Until you're, until you're there and right. you're in the midst of it. What it, uh, that's amazing. I mean, I can only imagine somebody 
21, 22 years old, and now I'm going to send you somewhere, and you're not going to be with your phone, you're not going to be with your right. with, with your computer and, and some exactly. of the other things that we take for granted, yep. and here's where you, and how fulfilled they must be through that experience, and I bet how that experience then informs the rest of, the, of their lives and the things that they're going to go on to do in the rest of their exactly. lives. There's four or five people from our regions have gone, visited one or the other countries. Everybody came back and within two to three days called me, messaged me, Brother Humayun, how can we help? Mm. Mm. Moving forward. Moving forward. Sure. Because yeah. it has changed them that much. It has changed them that yeah. much. They are, they, they are very emotional in their presentations every time they have come up on our stage and make the presentation. I get emotional <laughs> just which by is, talking which about is, uh, right. which when, sure. hey, <laughs> when, uh, We just finished an interview with Afnan and Danish who I believe is, is in Jordan right now, and right, they're, no, we're going to have them back, but okay. that's exactly how they pretty much said to me is how it changed their perception exactly. of humanity yeah. and how much they want to give and right. serve others. This is their second trip there, and amazing family. They go there, they take half a plane probably filled with goods, <laughs> collect all from the various communities, take it there and distribute it and spend a week to 10 days. Well, life changing, and it does go to show how we are all connected. I mean, I, I do, one of the things that I, I, I am concerned about is that in 2017 and in our modern life, the more that we're supposed to be connected through all of these electronic devices, sadly, I think the more that it sometimes is isolating us right. from being able to have the interaction, the human interaction that, that we really need. And here your organization is showing how every day there's people all around the world who are helping others, who are selflessly giving of their time, of their treasure to be able to make these good things happen. When you look for volunteers, you're not just looking for a service and time. They can also um, donate, correct? Oh, and if you can tell yes. a little about where they can donate and what they can choose to donate to. Okay. Like I said, we have supposedly 19 different programs on our website when you go and uh, uh, they are there at, again, www.hhrd.org. Uh, you can pick and choose any country, any program, any project you like. You can donate a dollar, you can donate a million. It doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. Everything adds up and goes a long way. Uh, so you can donate that. You can visit to our office. You can do it. You can mail it. Um, all our offices are listed on our websites. All the addresses are there on our website uh, where to reach us um, on the tab. Um, you can come. And my primary function is to reach out to communities, build bridges, and then eventually go in and ask them to empty their wallets. <laughs> Pretty much that's what I do. Uh, race that's funds. a skill. I mean, it really is. That's uh, uh, But still, that's I have to be able to it. do. It's still yeah. way far away. Uh, but still, uh, because we, we raise funds so our teams in the field can do, uh, can buy the goods, distribute it, help, because everything, um, even charity needs money to do right. it. It's not... Well, now I, I was just going to say, now I'm back to something that, that, that you said earlier, though. So now do you, you feel then, because this is something now that is, that is your skill that, that you are good at, you've been moved by all of these experiences that you have seen, so you were placed here. So the job loss actually was part of the master plan to place you exactly where you need to that's be? That's exactly, that's oh. what we say. That's, and I have so many, I've thought of leaving and whatnot, but everybody consoles me and says that, that everybody can't do this job. You were picked, you were given the job, you're doing it. Well, By God wills, you are succeeding it, so keep it going on it. And I don't worry about where the money comes from because that God has to give us the money. He's brought us into this life, and he will, he will find ways how we or those people who are suffering will get funds. Um, our goal is just to spread the message that this is what's happening. These are the things you can do. These are the ways you can help. Uh, donate, come and help us. Um, spread the word, take our flyers, help uh, within your community outreach. Right. Um, come to us, help us in the warehouse to help pack and sort. Uh, that's a charity too. You don't have to give money. Uh, you can come in and spend some time. Um, actually today, uh, there were two young girls from high school were there. They wanted uh, some uh, project to do and they, their mother thought of it and they brought them there. They spent an hour, packed a few clothes. Excellent. Can can kids from school and high school count this as volunteer work? And do you sign up for it so that if they if they can require it? For sometimes National Honor Society and different honor societies require volunteer uh, work hours. Right. Uh, you provide. They're all that? welcome. Yes, we do provide. We can. I can write a letter that they spend those hours. We sign their letters. Uh, they can come. Some of our Islamic schools comes, and like I mentioned, the church uh, 
Lutheran Church in Grafton. Uh, they are every now and then are visiting it, and they bring their youth, they bring their adults, they come, seniors comes in, and spend the time in doing it. So anybody and everybody is welcome if you can work. Yeah, no, I love how the entire community is involved in this mm -hmm. and able to get in involved, and really this network now stretches all around the world. Uh, continuing to expand, Helping Hand? Ex uh, we are expanding every year. When I started, we had only about 11 offices. We are down to 13 offices. When I started, we had 60 staff members. We are at 100 plus oh, staff wow. members in a year. So unfortunately, the nature is causing all these storms and earthquakes. Um, and then our political structure around the world is not helping either. Mm -hmm. So the wars and attacks mm -hmm. and all this is happening. So there's always a relief. What we do is only drop in the ocean. There's so much work to be done. Well, boy, congratulations. There are so many organizations yeah. out there. So. Th there are, and there, and there is, in the, and that was why I asked a couple of those, those questions earlier. I mean, we have some of that overlap in how maybe a little bit behind the scenes everybody is fulfilling certain needs, and you certainly seem to have found what it is that, you know, you are, are best at in your organization able to make happen and something that others weren't able to do. Right. Fascinated by uh, the fact that uh, you know someone you loses a loved one and now how do they sustain so great the way in which yeah you are able to, to fill that awesome we have just a, a couple of minutes left in the in the program so time to get your perspective I, on what we've before heard. I just uh, you know, finish up with my perspective I do want to give you a minute or so just to what would you want to say to our community how can they help out reach out to you how can they get contact with you um, if they're interested in having you come to their venue to talk more about this to their community. Sure. Um, visit our website. Um, join the website at www.hhrd.org. Um, receive our email. Sign up for the email so you'll get the regular updates. Uh, Facebook being the most active, uh, Tweet being the most active, you can join them to find out. Um, like I said, as we are located locally at uh, in Vespero, 80 Turnpike Road, uh, you're more than welcome to come and visit me. Call me at 508. 768-0177. Um, if I'm not in the office, I still get it on my cell phone, so it's all connected. So I'm never away from the office. Uh, so reach out to me. I'm more than welcome to come to any community, any organizations, to make a presentation what we do. That's all we need to do, and the rest, God takes over. So just to finish up, I mean, we do a lot of stories mm -hmm. on this show, uh, some serious, some heartbreaking. In the last few weeks, we've covered a lot of heartbreaking uh, stories like Burma genocide and, uh, you know, s refugees. But this is one, one show that really I felt, especially in the holiday season, we needed to do uh, to show the humanity that we still all have locally and internationally. And I encourage you in the season of the, the holidays, um, please keep giving and give in many different ways, your time, your energy, uh, your money, um, or, or just information and pass it along. Thank you so much and hope you guys join us again.